Welcome to Yahoo Finance Presents. I'm Julia LaRoche here with Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google and Alphabet. Sundar, thank you so much for having us here out in Mountain View for Google I.O.'s uh, Developers Conference. For this special exclusive coverage of the Daily Journal's annual meeting of shareholders, I'm Julia LaRoche coming to you from Miami, Florida. Welcome to this episode of Yahoo Finance Presents. I'm Julia LaRoche, and I'm so pleased to bring in our guest today, Chamath Palihapitiya. He's the CEO of Social Capital, a part owner in the Golden State Warriors, and the chairman of Virgin Galactic. And he's also on a mission to build this generation's Berkshire Hathaway, and some even say that he's the next Warren Buffett. Chamath, I'm so happy to bring you in. Hi. Nice to see you, Julia. Yahoo Finance's Julia LaRoche speaks with some of the biggest names on Wall Street and in finance, and she's speaking today with Bond King Jeffrey Gundlach. So let's go to Julia now live. Thank you so much, Adam. And Jeffrey Gundlach, founder and CEO of Dublin Capital, thank you so much for having us here for your investor days. Um, so I think it's best to start with your overall view of where we are in the markets. What do you make of what's transpired over the last year plus? It is my pleasure to bring to you an exclusive conversation with Paul Tudor Jones, the CIO of Tudor Investment Corporation. Paul is also the co-founder and chairman of Just Capital, and he's the co-founder and a board member of the Robin Hood Foundation. Paul, it is such a pleasure to have you join me today. Uh, it's great to be with you, Julia. You're the nicest person on Wall Street. Well, I appreciate that. And our viewers are obviously grateful uh, to hear from you. So let's kind of start big picture here. Obviously, 2020 has been a year like we've never seen uh, from the global pandemic, the sell off in March, the historic fiscal and monetary uh, responses that we saw, the election, now a runoff in the state of Georgia, um, markets hitting all time highs or new highs. And of course, the vaccine news, the light at the end of the tunnel. So kind of framing up all of that, I know it's a lot to digest. What are your views of the market and also the broader economy? I'm pleased to bring in our next guest, Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, the world's largest and most profitable hedge fund firm. Ray is also a well-known philanthropist and an author of multiple books. Ray, it's great to have you with us. So nice to be here. I mentioned at the top that you're an author of multiple books, and I know that you're writing one now called The Changing World Order, and you've been talking about three forces at play that were here pre-pandemic. Would love for you to share your worldview with our viewers and listeners. And I'm excited to bring in our next guest. We have Mark Cuban. Mark, I always love how you come with new ideas and solutions, and you think about how to problem solve. It just seems like that's in your DNA. Now, I've asked you a couple of times on Yahoo Finance's live programming, if you're thinking about that presidential run uh, in 2020, we're getting down to the, the wire here. Right. Uh, I would love to pose that question to you. And also, if you were in office, what would be one of the fundamental things that you would change that we have not yet mentioned in this conversation? Arnold Donald, CEO of Carnival Corporation. I have a confession for you. Yes. I've never taken a cruise. So how would you convince someone like myself to go on a cruise. Pleased to bring in Bill Ackman, the CEO of Pershing Square Capital Management, also the CEO of Pershing Square Tontine Holdings. Bill, congrats on the big debut today. Uh, thanks so much. Shares are trading up uh, more than 8% right now, $4 billion raised a record here. Uh, a lot of talk right now about SPACs versus the traditional IPO. Why now? Why a SPAC? And uh, what do you make of what's going on right now as it relates to public offerings? And bringing to you now a conversation with Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson, fresh off the coffee chain, second quarter earnings results. Kevin, uh, great to have you as always. Uh, the big takeaway from the earnings call I got was that the sales recovery um, has happened here in the U.S. And you were talking on that call about how you were even optimistic about not only the back half of fiscal 2021, I should note that you all did raise your guidance on EPS and revenue, but also you talk about growth for the next several years. Where are you getting the confidence uh, when it comes to growth? You know, Mark, the challenge for public company CEOs is always balancing short-term results, quote, making the numbers, 
doing enough buybacks all while creating long-term shareholder value. So can you talk a bit about like your theory about how to balance the two? <laughs> We're going to dig into the focus performer um, in just a bit in this conversation, but I guess to follow on to the MyFitnessPal going back to 2015, uh, in February of 2015, when Under Armour first acquired it uh, for $475 million. That was the reported number at the time. It had about 80 million users. I noticed in the press release today, it said 200 million users. Yeah, a lower price here. Um, what happened? Well, speaking of economics, let's talk about the economy. You know, the data has been looking pretty good, yet some economists are saying that we're due for a recession. So, Lloyd, what is your outlook? You know, Goldman Sachs also turns 150 this year. Um, technology has really changed financial services since you got in 35 years ago. How do you see tech kind of changing Goldman in the future, Goldman adapting to tech? Probably a key driver of that, Roz, is the digital ecosystem you all have built. Of course, the app, I think the latest was 19.3 million users. And uh, some of the data you shared, one in every four transactions, you said this earlier, um, comes from mobile order and pay and nearly 50% of the revenue, yet you all have tens of millions of customers in the US who might not be in that digital ecosystem. What is the big challenge you have to overcome to bring more into that? And what is um, what do you think could happen? What is the growth story when you do successfully bring more members into uh, your digital app? Sundar, you did mention uh, reimagining you know, the future of work. And when I think of Google, we're here on uh, Google's campus. Google was really famous for kind of creating the fun office environment, you know, like all the perks and the amenities that made you want to be in the office. So help us further understand your views of uh, the future of work and the opportunities that you see within the hybrid model. Ken, when you do have conversations, I'm, I'm taking it you visited some of these young folks and you have talked about mm -hmm. your book. Um, what are you hearing from them, though? I know you have this message of capitalism, but what are you hearing? Like, what are their frustrations? <laughs> One thing that's interesting to me, Tillman, is that you have a pretty young mindset um, as a business person. And you also write, you don't fear anything, but you worry about everything. So using that young mindset, what's the one thing that worries you about our generation, the millennial generation? Well, I know it's really difficult to get a job at Blackstone. I was reading some of the stats in the book. So I have to ask you this. Do you think if you're applying uh, to a job at Blackstone that they would hire you? Well, this is what I worry about because I don't think they would. <laughs> well, someone might look at you and say, well, Mark, you're a beneficiary of the capitalist system. You say that it's dead. Do, can you pinpoint when it died, how it died? What killed it? Do you feel like there's sometimes a disconnect with some of the stuff that you're doing at Walmart? You have been investing in your employees, $11 to start, up 50% from four years ago. And looking all in, it comes at about $17.50. Yet folks still criticize you, most notably Senator Sanders. So what do you make of the criticism? And do you think <laughs> that will ever change? Probably not. <laughs> I just want to read a tweet that you put out. You said... Quote, earlier this year, I decided to donate to the Democrats whenever Trump did something cruel, reckless, or strategically incomprehensible. He has exceeded all my expectations. He is responsible for 750000 to the Dems and counting. And in a reply tweet to that, um, because somebody said even Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you said, quote, I love AOC. She will be president one day. I will be there when she's ready. I was hoping you could speak to um, maybe what the future of leadership in this country could look like, should look like. In 2016 and 2017, we've seen what divisiveness looks like. We've seen what hatred looks like. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on what it would look like to join and bridge groups that naturally divide along lines, whether they're political or economic or even geographic. That's a heavy question. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Charlie. Our first question comes from Michael Wong. Michael Wong asks, in this year's annual letter, you mentioned the share price increase was driven by speculative frenzy and forced index buying. I would imagine that applies to the broad market too. What are the psychological implications of this type of market behavior? What could investors do to cope better with periodical frenziness? Welcome back to Davos, Switzerland. We're live inside the Congress Center at the World Economic Forum, the 50th annual meeting. And we're joined by Stephanie Lenartz from Marriott International, the Group President for Operations and Technology. 
thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, I love that you have technology in your title because when I stay at a Marriott, I've noticed that you all have really gotten the tech game down. So I'm just curious though, how is tech driving the business? What are the opportunities that you're seeing? What's going on, Julia? Hey, that's right, Jen. I'm here at Brooks Running with the CEO, Jim Weber, and they just had a record year and also a record quarter. So Jim, what is driving the growth here at Brooks Running? Charlie Munger and Jerry Salzman, I thank you so much for those nearly two hours of your wisdom on business, investing, and life. And I know our viewers at home appreciate it. Be well to you both and more coming up on Yahoo Finance Live after this.